Hello viewers, I want to talk to you for a moment about what makes Jehovah's Witnesses believe what they believe. Um, this seems may seem like an odd question, there are obviously lots of reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses believe what they believe. Religion is inevitably a very complex issue and there are lots of factors, both emotional and intellectual, at play when it comes to the reasons, the motivations behind someone's religiosity, no matter what faith they're in. But it just seems that I've, by this point in my activism work, had the opportunity to speak to a number of believing witnesses. Granted, they didn't always know that I was a so-called apostate. But I'm always interested to have these conversations to understand the mindset of a believer and to understand why they actually believe what they believe. And it seems to me that there are two main reasons why someone would be a Jehovah's Witness. Or at least there are two reasonably justifiable reasons that, as it turns out, aren't all that justifiable. But reason number one or the main reason, in, in my view, should be that it's the one true religion. And that may sound simple, but for Jehovah's Witnesses or any organisation to be the one true religion, there has to be a moment in history where God selects that organisation. And according to current Jehovah's Witness beliefs, there was a period between 1914 and 1919 when Jesus Christ inspected the world's religions and chose the Watchtower Society, which at that time was headed by Joseph Rutherford. He chose that organisation to be his faithful and discreet slave. So that from 1919 onwards, Jehovah's Witnesses were God's only channel of communication with mankind. That's a Jehovah's Witness belief. And that really should be the reason why a Jehovah's Witness would be a Jehovah's Witness. It shouldn't matter about anything else. Um, either it's Jehovah's appointed organisation or not. So that's reason number one. And I'll come back to that. Reason number two why you would be a Jehovah's Witness, as far as I can tell, and again from talking to actual believing Jehovah's Witnesses, is basically what I like to refer to as the box ticking exercise. With the box ticking exercise, you will, you will ask a Jehovah's Witness, tell me why you believe it's the truth. Tell me why you're convinced that this is God's only organisation and they will start reeling off a series of boxes that they've been able to tick. So they'll say, oh, well, only in this organization do you have true love. And Jesus said that um, his followers would have love among themselves. Only in this organization do you have um, a pacifist people who will not go to war against one another. Only in this organization do you find people using the divine name of Jehovah. Only in this organization do you have true unity. And so they will list off all of these boxes that they're ticking, many of which are, are purely kind of ideological. For example, they might say, oh, well, we're the only organization that um, refutes the Trinity or refutes hell, which isn't necessarily true, but they've... <laughs> They've had some beliefs chosen for them by a watchtower that make them unique, if that makes sense. Now, the, there are problems with both reasons for being a Jehovah's Witness. And I'm going to come back to the first reason about 1914 to 1919. But the main problem with the second reason, with the box ticking exercise, is that anyone can replicate those boxes if they really want to. I could if I really wanted to set up a club where we only refer to God as Jehovah, 
where we believe in uh, love for one another and we are strictly pacifists, so we don't believe in going to war. We could have in this club rules about um, not believing in hellfire or the Trinity. In other words, we could mimic each of those um, issues, each of those boxes in our organisation. It would only be a small club, but it shouldn't be about the size, should it? Because if it's about size, then automatically the largest religion wins. It should be about who is ticking those boxes. And if the club that I set up manages to tick all of those boxes, then by default, it becomes God's one and only true organisation. That's manifestly ludicrous. If any group is God's one true organisation, it is because it has been chosen by God, not be simply because it ticks a whole lot of boxes. But what's interesting is that I think that the majority of witnesses fall into this way of thinking. I think the majority are duped into thinking, well, it must be Jehovah's true organization because what other organization would do this? What other organization would do that? Of course, again, all of these criteria are suggested by Watchtower. <laughs> it's only gonna suggest criteria that it knows it can meet or at least is perceived as meeting those criteria. And witnesses fall for it. But it's, it's manifestly not a reason why it should be considered as God's one true organisation. It's purely a case of ticking boxes. What should matter to Jehovah's Witnesses is that their organisation has unequivocally and demonstrably been chosen by God to be his chosen channel with mankind. And that takes us back to the first reason why Jehovah's Witness would believe, which is the 1914 to 1919 teaching. And there, there too we have a problem because there's no way anyone can prove it. Jesus returns to earth invisibly and invisibly inspects all of the Earth's religions and then invisibly chooses Watchtower. This is something that cannot be falsified. No one can prove that it did or didn't happen. You just have to believe. And if you can reach a point where you can base your entire life, your entire spiritual life on, well, you've just got to have faith, then you might as well be in any religion. Seriously, if you are going to tell me that Jesus came to earth and selected an organization that was teaching that Armageddon should have come in 1914 and, oh, but don't worry, it's probably going to come by 1925. And, oh, by the way, Moses Sampson and King David are going to get resurrected any moment now and they're going to help set up this world government. And <laughs> the teaching of the pyramid, which was only dropped in 1928. So when Jesus chose the organisation in 1919, apparently it was teaching that the, py the Pyramid of Giza was God's stone witness and that the dimensions of the internal chambers were clues about periods in uh, Bible history. This is nonsense. This is the book The Finished Mystery which was printed and distributed from 1917 onwards. So smack bang in the middle of this invisible inspection period. Jesus apparently would have read or, or at least been familiar with what was written in this book. If you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this video I challenge you to look up a copy of this book. It's available in PDF form if you just do a Google search. Just read this book and ask yourself the honest question, would Jesus have chosen the Watchtower organization based on what was being written and distributed by its followers at that time? Something to something to just challenge yourself on there. I guess the point I'm trying to make is 
that both reason number one and reason number two are terrible reasons. Reason number two, again, if you're going to do a box ticking exercise, then any individual or group can start ticking those boxes for themselves. It doesn't automatically make them God's one true organisation. What you need is a divine mandate, which takes us to reason number one. And it turns out that when you look at the reason that's given by Watchtower as to why they are God's one true organisation, you get given this teaching about 1914 to 1919 that makes no sense whatsoever. And actually, if you do take that claim seriously, then we should all be studying what Watchtower was printing and publishing in those years, because it would have been a very, it, it was basically on the basis of that material that the organisation was chosen. If you are going to believe the 1914 to 1919 teaching based purely on faith, then what's stopping you from believing that Joseph Smith found some golden plates and translated from them the Book of Mormon? What's stopping you from believing that? Because you're already accepting something based purely on faith. You might as well join any religion. So I just wanted to explore those reasons with you. I know that, as I said before, there are more complex reasons why people don't just have a religion but hold on to it. And an example, one example I can think of is when you lose someone as a Jehovah's Witness. You lose someone who's precious to you. And you get told that you're going to see them again in the future if you'll only attach yourself as closely as possible to the Jehovah's Witness organization. And although that's a reason to be a Jehovah's Witness, it's a reason that is dependent upon either one or both of the two reasons I've already explained. So in other words, if a stranger comes up to you and says, follow me and I'll reacquaint you with your dead loved one, you're not going to just follow them based on that, based purely on that promise. You're going to want to know how they can uh, deliver your dead loved one back from the dead. And that takes you back to those first two reasons. You, you base your belief in the resurrection, you base your belief in the paradise, either on the, uh, the theology of 1914 to 1919, or on the box ticking exercise, or on a combination of the two, which I think applies to most witnesses. I think most witnesses are vaguely familiar with the 1914 to 1919 teaching, but predominantly it's about the box ticking exercise. And I actually think, this is how crazy it gets, I actually think that Watchtower is now in a position where it controls, where its control of Jehovah's Witnesses is so powerful through its indoctrination and through its propaganda that it could, if it wanted, completely get rid of 1914 to 1919. It could ditch basically the 1914 uh, theology and just say to Witnesses, we are God's one true organization because we say so and because we're ticking all these boxes. And I think the vast majority of witnesses would go along with that. That's how heavy the indoctrination is. But again, neither of those reasons are good. Neither of them hold up to scrutiny. And if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, I think you owe it to yourself to think about that. But those are just some thoughts. I'd be interested to know what you think in the comments below. I hope you have found this video interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And as always, thank you for watching.